YouTuber Andrew Flair, who has been renovating an abandoned nuclear missile silo in Nebraska, has been sued after the death of one of the workers who was hired to help renovate it. Mr. Flair was renovating this nuclear missile silo as part of a project to flip it into an apartment, and he has made some of the single dumbest comments that I've ever heard as an attorney from anybody when they're in the middle of a lawsuit like this. I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney, an attorney at Newper & Covey, and I want to walk you through the case, what this missile silo looks like, and why it is incredibly stupid to be making jokes about this after something like this happens. This is an article about the lawsuit from Nebraska TV, which is the local ABC News affiliate in the area. It's in York, Nebraska, which is a small town where they had these nuclear missile silos, which are uh, put in areas like this because they were there in the Cold War, whenever you know the U.S. and the Soviet Union were planning what would happen if they tried to attack each other and blow everyone up. Um, it's been decommissioned, but he had bought this to try to uh, convert it into a doomsday you know, shelter or an apartment. He's kind of said both online. And this article says the lawsuit says the only entrance to the missile, missile silo was a steel mechanical door that came out of the ground in an enclosed cement structure. But to open it, you had to manipulate an, a, quote, unnecessary and unreasonable combination of metal rods, jumper cables, a car battery, a super winch 2500, a pulley system, various hooks, and a rusted stairway railing. The guy who was killed at this place was called Joseph Arkfeld, and he was an electrician who this says was contracted to go perform renovation work on it, but he, he they left him alone in charge of closing this sort of weird door that was on, on the top of the missile silo, and I'll show you that in a minute. And the lawsuit says that they didn't adequately instruct him on how he was supposed to lock this door. It has this strange system designed to do it, and that it also is alleging that the the door closes with a force of 2,000 pounds, and he got crushed by this door frame when he was trying to open it and close it as he was leaving after doing work on this uh, missile silo. Now, I'm going to show you the door. We have images from various videos that were being posted about this, so you can see what this missile, missile silo actually looks like. This is the outside of the silo, and it looks like that's the door they're talking about, kind of a Fallout 4 type scenario here where they've got this giant uh, steel thing, and you can see that there is this system that looks like they've got pulleys or some kind of, they're building something above it to be able to open it up. There's some buildings outside it. Generally, these silos are underground. They're not something, they're built like that because they were literally designed to try to survive a nuclear war. There was a whole doctrine that the U.S. and the Soviet Union had called mutually assured destruction, where the short version of it is they try to make sure everyone gets blown up if there's a war, and the hope is that no one has one because it would be crazy to do that, which is why it stands for MAD, M-A-D. Um, and but the problem is that this thing that they're they're designing here if if the guy doesn't know how to use it and it's got sort of that complex system they're talking about it's going to be a problem and it was a problem here and let me show you some more about the of the inside of this missile silo this is a hallway that leads down into it they're buried underground again this is about trying to make it as survivable as possible so that they get as much time as they need to launch off missiles uh, before they got hit by the other side when you went down into it, they had this work area, and this is under construction. They're trying to build this into an apartment, but you can see there's stuff everywhere. There's wood. There's random wires being run, run along inside it, which is what they're alleging in the lawsuit, that there was not really a whole lot of safety going on here. This is another part of the silo. Again, there's just wires and stuff around everywhere. You can see they're putting an actual flooring, so this would be someplace you could live inside of uh, whoever he flipped it to. And then back to the main page, this thing in the middle is kind of decorative. They're painting it. They're trying to make a big thing in the center of the apartment, so it's got... Uh, sort of a unique look for whoever's living there. This is an article by the Omaha World Herald. They did some very good investigation into this to sh get some more details about what was happening. So we can look at a few of the things that they're saying in their article online. Uh, and this is by uh, William Sweat, uh, who's actually from a different newspaper, the York News Times. They're all they're all covering up this. There, this is uh, one of the biggest stories in York. Uh, so they say that there's this lawsuit. The sheriff of York County. Uh, got a call, they say, around, it, it was at night, so at 8.26 p.m., he gets called to say that there's a man trapped between a steel door and a wall, and by the time they got there, Mr. Arkfeld had already died from internal injuries. They don't suspect foul play. They do think this is absolutely an accident, um, and there's, they say that uh, they give some background on this bunker that he was doing. He has some videos inside it. Uh, actually, where the missile was is like a giant water pool uh, inside it. Um, and they say that when he's doing these renovations, um, the lawsuit's alleging that it's this Rube Goldberg machine to try to get into the entrance. They're talking more about how they have this... Um, Ark, Mr. Arkfeld was sent out there. He's a retired electrician. He was hired to do kind of odd jobs, and they sent him there to start uh, help working on this renovation that was already in process. And 
they say that um, Mr. Flair's father is also involved in the renovation. He had been there. Mr. Flair's father leaves in the afternoon, but he leaves this Arkfeld guy to go stay behind and finish the work and tells him to lock the entry door. Now, this does say Mr. Flair's attorney is denying that, that, was, that he was told to do that, so there may be some suggestion that Mr. Arkfeld had some negligence here as well. They're saying that there was this winch, this winch they had a battery, um, the winch opens and closes the door, again, it's got this this 2,000 pounds worth of, worth of force, but then while he was trying to leave, he got trapped against the door frame and it crushed him, and they say that he spent several moments trapped there knowing that he was going to die and uh, was eventually crushed by this. They say that the door was inoperable, they had to get a, actually a tow truck to go out and open it, and now his wife is suing Mr. Flair, saying that he that there was negligence in designing this, in the operation of this door, that they ignored safety protocols, they ignored working conditions. She's even saying that he was mocking safe, safety protocols and working conditions in some of his YouTube videos. And there's something uh, that I think is potentially a little worse than that from an attorney perspective that I'm about to show you that he was saying after this happened. Now, this is a YouTube video, and it was posted 10 months ago, and I'm making this post on November 5th, 2023, so that means that it was posted around January 2023. Important to this is that this, this death happened in December 2022, so this video is being posted about maybe a month after this, was, after this, this happened, so let's look at what, was, uh, what happens in this video. Two of the construction workers died when they were building out. Yeah, dude. Who else is that fondue? We might be the first people on the planet to have fondue inside of a missile silo. I'm sl so that is the uh, joke that he was making in a video that was posted about a month after this happened. That, I can tell you as an attorney, is terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, his attorneys will be, or the attorneys for um, the wife will be all over this because uh, when it comes to punitive damages in terms of whether a jury should award uh, damages to punish or deter misconduct, if he's saying things like this online, if he's joking about people dying building the missile silo a month after it happens, that's terrible. That 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 looks so horrible to a jury. Um, normal people are gonna make it. They're gonna feel like he doesn't have a whole lot of remorse over this when he's making those kind of jokes or uh, talking about it, even in a lighthearted tone. When did he record this? I mean, it could be. Uh, it may be that he recorded this earlier but posted it after. That doesn't really help him and may actually make it worse. Speaking as an attorney, I kind of think like. If if you post it after, it shows just a lack of remorse and a lack of understanding of the seriousness of this and how this can affect the family when they're watching you kind of go, ha ha, two people died building this missile silo. Um, and then if you said it before, well, you still are posting it after the death, but then also it, sh it, it goes along with sort of statements that you don't care about the safety, you're making fun of the safety protocols. If you're hyping up that how dangerous this was, it shows knowledge of the dangerousness and knowledge of how, um, how dangerous it can be there that... Uh, that, that makes it more likely that this is viewed as intentional or at a minimum what's called grossly negligent, which is a higher form of negligence um, that can lead to more punitive damages and, and greater issues for a defendant. Now, who's responsible in this? Mr. Flair says that uh, he denies that there was an, and you can see up here, this is again the Omaha uh, uh, World Herald. They say that, or Mr. Flair is saying he's, he denies that there that there was any failure to inform Mr. Arkfeld, the guy who died, about this. He denies that you had to use this uh, car battery with jumper cables uh, to start the, the door, which is what the lawsuit's alleging. The lawsuit is suing not just Flair, but you can see three companies that he has, Beefcake Construction, uh, Andrew Flair Outdoors, and, and Huya Enterprises, LLC. And I think this is saying that the reason he's it's about beefcake is that he started a, a beef jerky company called Beefcake Jerky recently. Um, and he has filed a motion to dismiss, so Mr. Flair is trying to get rid of this. In the, a negligence-type case, that's kind of hard. Uh, usually, that's a jury issue as to whether there was negligence or was not negligence, uh, but, but we'll see if he gets it dismissed. A motion to dismiss is an effort to get rid of the case early before it sees a jury, before it even gets into what's called discovery, where you get uh, evidence about what happened. One of the big problems for Mr. Flair, though, in addition to the comments that he's making on there that do seem kind of callous in, in retrospect, it seems like he should not have been posting things like that after he knew that someone had died at this site trying to help his construction, is that uh, it does look very much from at least what's being alleged like he had personal involvement in supervising all this construction, maybe at a greater level than someone who just hires some other contractor or worker to do it. He's got his own construction company. His dad is out there at the site. Uh, he appears to be out there at the site. He's in all the videos doing all kinds of stuff. Certainly would be aware of what's going on there. Um, and so it makes it a lot harder to get out of any kind of liability when you have this the, the more involvement you have running it, the more you're in charge, the more you are 
have all these companies doing it, harder it is going to be to say that you didn't have responsibility for making sure that that door with all that pressure and all that risk was safe. If you want to see more videos about crazy lawsuits or legal cases, hit subscribe.